welcome to my channel. I'm Isabella and today I would like to tell you about some unique Polish Christmas traditions. I am Polish and even though I live in England with my family, I continue my Polish Christmas traditions. Christmas is certainly one of my favourite times of the year and I feel that the Christmas traditions that I know from Poland are beautiful and full of symbolic meaning. For this video I chose six Polish Christmas traditions which will give you a glimpse into how we celebrate Christmas. The first important tradition is that we start our Christmas celebrations on the 24th of December with the Christmas Eve supper. This is basically our main festive meal. Uh, Christmas Eve is called Vigilia in Polish you can recognize here the English word vigil and for Polish people it is the focal point of all the Christmas celebrations. On that day families gather together and even though it is not a public holiday everyone makes an effort to get home in time for the Christmas Eve supper. Um, it really is a very special time for us. We look forward to our Christmas Eve supper the same way people here in the UK, where I live, uh, look forward to their Christmas Day dinner. Uh, so when we prepare for Christmas, a lot of the preparations go into preparing the Christmas Eve supper. And we have many beautiful traditions associated with that day. That brings me to the second Christmas tradition, which is putting hay underneath the tablecloth. When we lay the table for Christmas Eve supper, we put hay underneath the tablecloth and that has a symbolic meaning. Uh, it symbolizes the fact that Jesus was born in a stable and was laid on hay in the manger. The hay doesn't have to be spread out all around the table, we just put some in one corner, the less busy one, and you know it's there. Um, you can put some decorations in that area on top of the tablecloth like the candle or the, um, or the nativity scene to make it stand out a bit. The next tradition is also related to the table. When we arrange the plates and cutlery uh, we prepare one additional place to what we actually need. That is to remind us of people who for whatever reason can't be with us on that day and it is also in memory of our deceased relatives and friends. That way we remember about them and keep them in our prayers. But this tradition of a spare place at the table is also done for another reason. It's there for the so-called unexpected visitor. We believe that no one should be alone on Christmas Eve and if somebody should knock on the door, we should let them in. Now, once the table is laid and we have our food ready, there is one thing we have to wait for before we gather around the table. That's the next tradition on my list and it's particularly popular with children. I wonder if you can guess what it is? We basically wait for the first star to appear in the sky. Wherever there are children at home, they are usually very excited to look for the first star and they can't wait to shout out that they spotted one. This tradition is of course in remembrance of the Star of Bethlehem. Needless to say, sometimes you can't see the star because it's cloudy, but you still look for it. Next, we looked for the star, we gathered around the table, and before we can actually sit down to eat, we have the tradition of breaking the Opwatek wafer. It's basically a rectangular piece of wafer that in essence is made the same as the host used for the mass. It usually has a nativity scene pressed on it and you normally get a few in the pack. Most of them white, but there usually is one that is pink. I'll tell you why later. Uh, you get your wafers from your church and they would have been blessed uh, by the priest. Uh, so everyone gets a piece of a poatek and what we do is we go to each person and we break off a tiny piece of their wafer and eat it. 
while they are breaking off a piece of yours and eat it as well. And while we're doing this, uh, we exchange best wishes, we wish each other Merry Christmas and all the best for the new year. Uh, and we repeat this process with every single person present, so everyone breaks the wafer individually with everyone. If you have a big family, it will take a while, but that's okay. We don't rush it. Um, and this tradition symbolizes love and sharing, the unity of the family, forgiveness. You get the idea. Um, and I mentioned earlier the pink wafer. That one is normally reserved for any household animals that you might have. Uh, so you can break off a little piece and give it to your cat or dog or sheep, cows, I mean uh, absolutely any animals that you might have. And that is supposed to preserve them from any illness, but also there is a belief that if they eat the wafer, they will speak with human voice at midnight that night. So it's worth a try. All of that actually brings us to the Christmas Eve supper itself and the tradition is that we have 12 meat-free dishes. Number 12 symbolizes the 12 apostles and also the 12 months of the year and there is an old belief that you should try all of the dishes in order to stay healthy for the whole next year. For the first course people normally have red barscht which is beetroot soup, and that is served with small mushroom-filled dumplings called ushka. Uh, there are some regional variations, and in some parts of Poland people have mushroom soup, but for the majority it is the beetroot soup, and um, that's what we always have. The second course is fish, and uh, that is carp. As such, we don't eat carp a lot at all, and to be honest, I've only ever had it at Christmas Eve supper. Uh, but for Christmas, it certainly is the fish to have. These days, you buy fresh or frozen carp that has already been pre-prepared, but when I was little, you would buy a live one that you bring home in a bag filled with water, and you put it in your bathtub, and the carp would swim in there until it was time to get it ready. Um, it was always so much fun to look at the carp in our bathtub and it just felt so weird, but that's what people did. Um, other food that we have includes pierogi, which are dumplings. For Christmas Eve, these will be filled, um, for instance, with cooked sauerkraut and mushrooms. Uh, then we also have bigos, which is often translated into English as hunter's stew. And that's stewed cabbage or sauerkraut, normally with different types of meat. But for Christmas Eve, uh, we use mushrooms to replace meat. Other things that we have are vegetable salad, herring, cod, uh, dried fruit compote, little yeasted pancakes called ratsushki, gingerbread biscuits and many other things. Uh, to be fair, there are various regional dishes that people have, but the two that most people prepare are the beetroot soup and carp. The Christmas Eve supper lasts for hours. We basically sit around the table until we go to the midnight mass. In the meantime, apart from eating, we sing Christmas carols, we exchange gifts, and basically have a good time enjoying each other's company. We do have other traditions as well, like decorating the Christmas tree, decorating the house, making your own Christmas ornaments, etc. But the six traditions that I chose to talk about give you an idea of what Christmas feels like for me and other Polish people. I look forward to this all year and it certainly feels like a very special time. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what your favorite Christmas traditions are, I would really love to know. Uh, in the meantime, God bless and I will speak to you soon. Bye!